Hello, welcome to this video on how to master ties in written music. This is something that comes up quite often in our beginner classes, but is equally relevant to more advanced musicians who are playing some pretty complex rhythms uh, with some tricky ties in there, and you need practice strategies for how to master these things. Question number one, you may already know the answer to this. What are ties and why do we have them? Uh, the simple answer is that when you have two of the same note, for example, one C note and another C note, and you have a curved line between them, which is our tie, it means you join them together. So if your first C was two counts and your next C was one count, you would tie them together to make a three count C note. Two plus one, boom, three. Okay, very tricky math so far. Uh, why do they exist? Well, they actually come in a couple of different forms. The simpler version of this is when you need to create a long note, but the music requires a bar line to be in place. So for our, uh, our beginner players, you'll be coming up against songs like Shoe Fly and London Bridge and Old MacDonald. And all of these sometimes need you to play a long note when there is a bar line written in the music. And the way we get around that, when you can't just draw a minimum, which is our two beat note, when you can't draw one of those or even a semi breathe because there's a bar line in the way, you need to tie across the bar line. That's why that's the more simple version of this. Uh, this is where you're going to see it most often in our method book. So step two is the more complex version. I'm going to come to that at the end so the beginners can switch off uh, and just those that need the revision can have a listen to a more complex uh, rhythmic pattern using ties. Uh, we're going to skip to number three, which is how to master them on your instrument. So, let's say that you've taken a tune like Shoe Fly. Uh, in the Sound Innovations book, Shoe Fly is song number 43. And almost immediately, you're hit with two crotchets, two tars that are tied together. For trumpets, this is your very second note, E, C. And for trombones or baritones, that's your D going down to a B flat, and you'll see the tie pretty much straight away. Step one, we are going to go straight to playing it. I'm going to presume that you can uh, identify those notes easily enough to go straight to playing. Otherwise, you've got strategies for this collapsing play. Um, we're going to go straight to playing this, but we are going to mentally delete that curved line, the tie, and we're going to try playing it with no tie at all, as if the notes are not connected. That would give you this. So you have a string of normal old tars. Ta, 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 ta. I'm going to do that one more time. This time I'm going to count it in because it is vital when you're practicing tars that you're keeping a steady beat in mind and you're feeling a steady beat. So here's my tempo. One, two, one, two. So you could hear that all of those tars right from the start were at the exact same tempo that I was imagining before I started playing. Okay, step two. If you're keeping up so far, we are going to combine note two to note three. So instead of ta, 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 we're going to join those two low notes together. Ta, ta, ta. You still need to feel the second half of the note, but we're not going to tongue it. We're just going to flow straight through that. So you end up with this. One, two. And I'm even going to practice just that first little phrase, uh, aiming for three times in a row correct, and then I know I'm ready to combine it um, to play it as a whole phrase. One, two. That's two in a row. One, two. Okay, so at this point, I've done it three times correctly. I know I'm ready to uh, join it to the rest of that phrase. Let's see if I can play it correctly. Here's the first four bars of the tune. One, two. second half of that top line, uh, you have the same rhythm pattern again. You can practice it without the tie first. 
And obviously make sure you're getting down to second position or second valve for that low note. That'll be an A for low brass and low B for trumpet. And then you put it all together. Here is how that whole song would sound with ties. One, two. method books. Here's the tune with no ties. So once again our process is play it with no ties, do not join the notes together, aim for clear tonguing and feel a steady beat. Then play it again with the ties, breaking it down into small chunks if you need to. Uh, oh yeah, I should be able to remember this one. Here's the whole tune. I'm gonna go faster. No ties. One, two, <laughs> Good job, Mr. Taylor. Then, same time, uh, same deal, but this time, I keep feeling that steady beat, but I'm going to join the tied notes at the end of each line. So end of line one, right before that breath mark, we have two B flats tied together for low brass, that becomes a three count B flat. We have two C's tied together for trumpets, that becomes a three count C. Sounds like this. One, two, <sighs> simple. That is the simpler form of ties, when you have two of the same note joined with a tie, and usually it's across a bar line, meaning the end of the bar. Let's give that a tick. Boom. Now, for the more complex one. Beginners, you can switch off now, or you can keep listening if you really want to, because you're unlikely to see a rhythm like this. T, ticker, 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 T, rest. You're unlikely to see uh, ticker tickers like these until at least next year, possibly until you get to high school. I'm going to say that rhythm again, making sure I'm feeling a steady beat. One and two and three sounds like this. T, ticker, 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 T. There's the rhythm. Here's how it would sound on the note F for trombone. That's a G for trumpet. <laughs> Um, it's fine as it is, but if we want to make this sound jazzier or funkier, uh, we're going to add some ties. So this is now to create some more exciting syncopated rhythms, which means rhythms where you're emphasising notes off the beat. Uh, what if we... What if we tie together the last note of the ticker ticker and the first note of the ticker tee at the end? That would give us this. Here's our beat. One and two and three and four and T ticker ticker tika kata. Now I don't know how I'd say that with ticker ticker words, but here's how it would sound on an instrument. Ready and much more interesting rhythm. What if we add another tie? Same thing, we're going to join the third note to the first note of our ticker ticker rhythm there. Ta 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 ta. And if I was to put that on different notes, I'm just going to pick some notes of a blues scale. Hopefully, it sounds pretty jazzy. Hey, that sounds 
sound pretty good. Okay, all of a sudden we've got some really interesting, exciting syncopated rhythms using ties. The good news for us, the way you would practice it is exactly the same. You feel the steady beat, or in this case, you might even set a metronome to keep the tempo for you. You could have that, or one and two and three and four. You get your metronome going, and then you'd play it without the tires. T, tika, 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 T, rest. And then you'd add in, you get the idea. We do this all the time. You break it down, you make it simpler, and then you add complexity from there. Three times perfect, and you're all good. Okay, I think we can tick off everything on our list. What are they? Well, we know that. Why do they exist? Because there are times when to make the music look, uh, or to make it easier to read the music, you would use this, or because the conventions of music like bar lines force you to do this. Uh, simple versions, usually just over the bar line, we know what to do with that. Complex versions, they just involve trickier rhythms and the ties happen within the bars themselves to give us more syncopated, exciting rhythmic patterns. And how to master them, mentally delete the tie, play it perfectly in time, gradually add in the tie or multiple ties from there. Well, there you go. There's your crash course on what to do with ties. Uh, this applies to anyone, beginner, intermediate, advanced. Um, until you are an expert reader who's reading difficult music every day of the week, um, you're going to need to rely on these strategies. And even those experts, they would do this stuff occasionally too. Good luck. I look forward to hearing what you come up with.